you're watching eSports Center and today I'm leveling up with Amon Green, Shane Vereen, and Brock Vereen. Hi guys, how are you guys doing today? Doing great. Doing good. How are you doing, Erica? Doing good. I realize I just said guys twice. It's going to be a great show. <laughs> so there's a, there's a lot I want to talk to you guys about. I'm so excited to cover the eSports movement to start off. That's happening across college campuses all over North America, all over the world, we're seeing universities and K-12 even for that matter, just really adopting esports as another alternative to sports in some cases and in others, leveraging it beyond uh, anything that athletics could alone produce as far as value to the student. So before I get there, you guys yourselves were former NFL players, rock stars in your own careers, and you're in your second act here, joining the esports movement. Should I say, hanging up your cleats for tra and trading it in for a controller? What's the story? Aman, I'll start with you. Um, I've been gaming my entire life, so I've, just as long as I've been playing football, which started with flag at age five, six years old. I was gaming on uh, Coleco Vision, playing Zagzon and Donkey Kong for hours on end with, um, with my dad, and then. I uh, earned uh, and graduated up to the Nintendo Entertainment System in uh, like 1984, and that was Super Mario Brothers and Gyro Might, um, Ten Yard Fight, Tecmo Bowl, things of that nature, Duck Hunt. Um, so that's it's been around. So I'm 43 now. Do the math. I'm not into doing numbers right now because I'm a coach and my brain is on overload. So you do the math on that. Um, I don't so, have yeah. to be your age. I, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Old, so games how does that translate to the games today uh well they don't they just everything has been updated you know next gen is the new word and it's been around for well it's not even new but it's now the consoles are getting more and more next gen graphics and and downloadable speed and all those big things big names and big things that like make gamers get super excited when they hear it because you know between sony playstation you know, Dell Computers, Origin PCs, those companies that build the machines that are what we're talking about that people compete on, um, they're getting better. So next gen, you know, when I started playing games, there was just, it was 8-bit and 16-bit and 64-bit. And now you're talking about, you know, frames per second on the monitor to uh, how many, you got terabytes of memory, like two, four terabytes coming in some of these consoles that are pretty much not much, they just one step down or lateral step to the left or right to a computer, which yeah. is what you know, we're about to experience with the Xbox X series and the uh, PlayStation 5 that just had a showcase yesterday. So, you know, so for me and next gen is like, finally, because we knew eventually they could have awesome special effects, awesome graphics in a video game, not just um, in a movie screen or in a commercial, but now in the systems and in the games that uh, we play now. Oh, it was bound to happen. But now you're the head of esports at Lakeland University. So clearly, you made that switch full time and went from a hobby to your second act. So uh, tell us a little bit about what's happening at Lakeland. Uh, uh, what's happening in Lakeland right now? So we starting our, this is like year zero, starting our first uh, season in esports. And that season's for Madden, Rocket League, Fortnite, Valorant. Um, Madden, a few Madden players. We have about five Madden players right now. And of the five, one of them is uh, undefeated right now. He's uh, Curtis Doki. He's 20. He's 2-0. and oh. um, And then Otis Watts, he's 2-1. and one. Um, And then the other guys, they just joined the squad just a few days ago, so they haven't played a game yet. So we'll find out where they land come next Monday. So all our Madden matches are on Monday night. Um, Fortnite started on Monday. They finished in uh, I think top 30 of uh, teams because they're playing in a actual uh, I'll say a lobby that is on the Fortnite game. They play in play versus is the, the the league or the conference they're competing in, and they had 30 points in this first game um, to play together as a trio. So I'm excited about that. That's a good spot for them um, in that, and it's going to just build up weekly and accumulate points to find out if we make it to the playoffs or not. So so right well, now we go on. Yeah. They got a great coach. And, you know, I don't know if it's fair that you're coaching Madden. <laughs> yes, it's fair. If you see these Madden players, Brock and Shane know what I'm talking about. 
We've seen Madden players. We've seen 2K players. Yes, it's fair that I'm yeah, here. It's a whole, it's a whole different game when it's an eSport, right? Because, But let, let me not get too much. You're going to take me in the weeds. I'm going to go down all these rabbit holes. <laughs> I want to talk about so much with you guys. But yeah. uh, let's talk about the, the pairing or the trio that we have here. Shane and Brock, you guys work, um, are invested into ESTV, uh, something, Amon, that you also work with. Yep. So what's, uh, what's ESTV about and why did you trade in your, your cleats for that? Yeah, uh, well, the funny thing, I mean, if you ask Amon, Shane, or me to ask any former teammate that we've ever had from high school to the NFL, uh, outside of the opponent that you're playing that week, the most popular conversation is honestly video games. And it's who can beat who in Madden, who can beat who in 2K, and the second that practice is over, or maybe some locker rooms have a console there, uh, guys are gaming all the time. That that feeling and that need to compete uh, d doesn't leave when the, uh, the, uh, the practice or the game ends. Um, so when the football days were over and the opportunity came about of this, this, this esports network, you know, there were rumblings about it. And, uh, thankfully a, a, a very good friend in Mark Watts, who is the VP at ESTV reached out and said, Hey, this is a thing. Do you want to be in on it? And having that background of playing video games against Shane and beating him all the time growing up, <laughs> it was just, it, it was, it was a match made in heaven. I mean, um, but I, I think a lot of people don't understand how much gaming is in tune with any professional sports locker room, any college sports locker room, any high school sports lo uh, locker room. Absolutely. I want to double click on that in, a, in just a second, but I got to give Shane a chance to speak because you just <laughs> threw shade at him. Like, you know, <laughs> did he really beat you? All the time. Look, look, I'm not, look. He's my brother. I played against him in any game more than I played against anybody else. So I'm bound to slip up every now and then. <laughs> the thing that really made me frustrated growing up, though, was once he would finally beat me, we wouldn't play that game again for like another <laughs> month. And then his oh. thing was, you're only as good as your last only game. Only as good as your last game. <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot stand that saying to this day. It still bothers me. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I think I think we need a part two of this show where you guys do a rematch. Like, we're gonna both Let's make it happen. Yeah, <laughs> make right. it happen. Yeah, you keep saying the word. But uh, yeah. but more about what, but you, what you were asking about, Erica, like Brock said, I mean, video games has been a part of our lives just as much as any other sport that we played. You know, um, when our parents gave us the opportunity to play video games instead of doing homework or making us get our get our butts outside. We were on the sticks. We were, we were playing. Uh, I remember N64 was um, the first big one. Uh, we had a Sega Genesis, but N64, I think, was the first one that really got us in the video game. King Griffey Jr., um, Quarterback Club. There were, there were so many older yep. games that just kind of just, just got the addiction going, if you will. Um, <laughs> and when we, like Brock said, when we had this opportunity, I think um, – you know, I give Brock credit because he was the one that brought this opportunity to me. He was contacted about it. He just seemed um, very aware of where esports was going and where the landscape and how fast it was growing. Um, and so I did some of my research, and uh, it just seemed like a no-brainer for us. And very happy to be here with ESTV. That's awesome. Well, I'm excited that you guys are here. I get the opportunity to pick your brains on a topic that is so dear to me, and I have tremendous respect for the journey that brought you all to esports because you had to make a very deliberate choice. You didn't have to. You didn't have to go into a second act career. You didn't have to, you know, give back to education and invest in the students' future by connecting them with a passion that can be so much more valuable to them than just playing games in mom's basement, right? I mean, that's fun too, but yeah. uh, <laughs> always fun. <laughs> so the other thing I want to talk to you guys about, so now that I understand why you traded in your cleats, you know, for Brock or Shane, it's clearly to find new ways to beat his brother. But, you know, there's advancing movements happening across, East, across you know, all of these schools with esports. So how is it becoming, are we going to see it become a mainstream sport offered in education? Ama, I think you're probably the best one to answer that. I mean, you are the head of esports at Lakeland, so... Uh, yes. So, yes, it definitely is. It's, it's, it's basically starting now across the land. 
I say to also now the United States, you could go to any universities from the schools we went to, from the Cal Berkeley, Nebraska, that now are offering esports program. And what all esports encompass is not just the video game competition aspect of it. And this is the part where you know Brock and Shane know now, and I was bringing, I brought them into the fold in terms of information. Um, along with Mark, along with Eric, the you who is the CEO there is telling them, you know, that along with the competition side of it, there is the production in front of the camera and behind the camera. And then there's the writing, you know, of the episodes of the rundown and having something other than just watching the teams compete in, in, in X game um, is actually following the players is no different than how we were followed as professional football players off the field what we do with our life away from the field. We could find out what that esports athlete team organization does to play, you know, get their game to be good at it, what they do when they're not doing that. Um, so it's a whole echo. I call it an ecosystem because it feeds off of itself. It grows. And so shout casting is one of those things that is just like commenting, no different than watching, you know, when we used to watch Al Michaels and John Madden on Monday Night Football, but it's, that's called sports, you know, and not alienization or broadcasting. This is called shoutcasting because in the beginning of video games and having people comment, people were yelling at the top of their lungs. They were kind of unrefined and just commenting on the game. But they knew it expert-wise. They could talk about what was going on, but obviously not as refined as you see guys in a suit and tie for NCAA or NFL or Major League Baseball commenting. But they're relaying the message, and the people watching understand it. You know, but then and that's in front of the camera. The behind the camera um, is the people running the camera, setting the microphone, setting the mics, making sure the audio is heard and the picture is clear. Um, if the, if you do it on your uh, stream or from your personal stream like Twitch, um, knowing how to run that stuff, that all teaches the kids new and different ways. Basically, in the, at the end of the day, if you are a streamer and or comp a competitive esports um, player, you are your own company. Because you learn how to use social media, media, you learn how to broadcast and air your show on Twitch, and then how to put out advertisements and do all this stuff that we do, um, that the jobs that we used to do do. You know, when they promote the season, when they do uh, uh, big fan-based things and talk about the games, and you got ESPN doing this, you got Fox Sports doing that, you got all these networks doing what they're doing towards traditional sports, and now esports time is here, and yeah unfortunate with the year it, the way 2020 has went but it's the perfect stage for esports now to say hey this is who we are and this is how we run and this is how we're going to work for this time and years to come absolutely but if you notice it's it always takes pressure applied in some form or fashion for a change to really accelerate in its adoption esports was already a major movement globally but now I think it's because of what you talked about, Brock and Shane, that competitive itch. It's filling that competitive itch for people that are maybe just casual gamers, non-gamers that are really wanting to watch and participate in that community and that engagement and that excitement, that drama that sports brings us. So that brings me to my next question for you guys, the parallels between traditional sports and esports. You talked about it a little bit, Barack, just when you were sharing your, your journey into, into the esports field. Uh, what do you think the major comparisons are between the two? Uh, finding what it takes to win, right? Um, no matter what level you, you play at, whether you are uh, just playing with your neighbor in your off time and you're 13 years old and you're hanging out on a Saturday afternoon and you want to play your best bud from down the street, or you're a professional player competing for half a million dollars, right? Um, or if you are Tom Brady on a football field this past Sunday, the, the, the comparison is still there. How was my opponent trying to beat me? And how do I stop them from finding success? And what are their weaknesses? And how do I beat them? Whether you are playing a first person shooter, whether you're playing NBA 2K, whether you're playing Fortnite, no matter whether you're playing chess, you like no, no matter what you're playing um, in reality or in the virtual world, uh, the steps it takes to win are the same. Um, what is their strategy? What is my strategy? And who is going to come out victorious at the end of it? So I think the hardest 
aspect for people to understand from a standpoint of, of seeing as a legitimate competition, the, the, the small percent of the population who, who are still trying to understand the whole esports thing um, and take it seriously, once they get over, it is somebody with a controller instead of somebody actually physically throwing a football or physically shooting a basketball, they'll realize the element of strategy and gamesmanship is still there. Um, and that's why they really go, go hand in hand. Yeah, and uh, to your point, watching, watching digital games ha unfold before your eyes where you're watching an avatar on screen, that might be where the parallels find their, their friction for people to make, right? Because it's easy for me to identify a jersey, the number on the back of the jersey, go to the games and know that I'm following that number. If that number scores, I'm supposed to get excited. If the people cheer next to me, I'm also going to cheer because it's just, it's just how it happens when you're surrounded by that and you, it feeds excitement. It's contagious, right? Maybe not a good choice of words nowadays, but, um. <laughs> For sure. but no, but no, but you're, 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 you're absolutely right. And honestly, why, um, why Gen Z and a lot of kids do still find that emotional attachment is because a lot of these gamers are rock stars. They have Twitch channels, um, Mixer, RIP, or a, maybe they stream on caffeine, but they're huge on Instagram. They're huge on Twitter. They're big on Snapchat. They're big on TikTok. So if I'm YouTube as well, YouTube as well. So if, 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 if I'm a fan of Fortnite and I want to find a team to root for, Hey, this team won, I'm going to root for them. Hey, what about this guy or this girl? I'm going to go find their Instagram. Now I know what their dog does. Yeah. I know if they have kids, I know what town they're from. And, that, that, that emotional connection, it takes longer, but it still exists. So that's it right there. You just, I've, duh, I just made a parallel myself. They're creating their brand in a different way. They're connecting with the, with their audience in a different way, with their fan base. Whereas in football and basketball and traditional sports, you have the media companies, you have ESPN and sports channels all across, you know, pick your number. There's plenty giving you that narrative, telling you what to look for, giving you the, the underdog story versus the, you know, the uh, legend in the making story, right? Um, when we don't get that with esports, I think it's harder for education institutions to grasp how does that actually benefit the whole student body. Shane, how do you think we could, uh, esports appeals to the broader student body for spectating opportunities um, would we would they have to connect and engage with their esports team and root for them in a different way? Right. Um, the way I think it connects to a bigger audience is that everybody can do it. Everybody can play these games at their house. You don't have to go to a park and find a basketball and find a few buddies to go and and play pick up basketball with. You don't have to go to find an open field to play football. Um, which typically not everybody is good at multiple sports, but anybody can pick up a controller. Um, in their house and and give it and give it a go and and enjoy it and I think because you've been able like I've I've played a lot of Call of Duty played a lot of Madden played a lot of 2K so when I see those tournaments on TV I've been there I can kind of understand their strategy I can kind of see um, what they're going through if they miss a shot or or if they get tackled fumble a football or or get kick, get a headshot you know I've been there I've experienced that and some of the frustrations that come along with it as well. So I think just being able to relate to those professional players that are doing these things um, is really going to broaden the audience. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I have to agree with you there. Uh, I just interviewed Joke a couple of days ago, who's the 2020 Madden Bowl champion. So I bet, I bet he would have taken you guys out on the field digitally. <laughs> yeah, digitally. Probably. Probably. Exactly. Probably. Yeah. It's a whole different game, right? So – how do we make it easier for if, if I'm not watching uh, Madden or 2K, then and I so I don't really know how to follow it because it's not familiar. Shane, how can we expect, you know, the non gamers like myself, uh, you know, back in school, I, I didn't play games. So this is a new this is my kind of second act too. hey, there you go. Cheers to that. <laughs> uh, but uh, how, how do we get them to watch an avatar and connect with that brand? If you're a student and you're being told SUNY Canton's team is playing tonight, Lakeland is playing SUNY Canton tonight, right? Uh, yeah. if, how, how do I spectate? How do I, it's on a screen. Is everybody going to come to a common arena to watch? Can they all just 
you know, have separate watch parties at their homes? How does that work? You know, I, I think, you know, that's tough because I also think that it takes a certain amount of interest. Uh, not everybody's interested in watching football on Sunday nights, um, but they are, but they might be interested in, like uh, for my wife example, she doesn't like watching a ton of football, but she knows a couple players because she follows their wives on Instagram. So it takes some some type of interest. And Brock alluded to how Instagram um, and, and how guys are building their brands is a little bit different. So I just think it takes a little bit of interest, just, just a little seed planted. Um, maybe it is just turning on and watching one game of Rocket League and maybe they're hooked. Maybe it's one game of Call of Duty and they're hooked. Um, I think everybody has their own niche um, of things that they're interested in and, and games uh, that they want to follow. And, and in turn, they'll they'll link all the champions and the winners. And to your point, the parallels between sports and esports, not everybody's going to be a football fan, but I might be an NBA fan, right? I might Correct. love to go to the basketball games, might hate watching golf, but I might love watching soccer, right? So you could probably make the parallel, I'm on, I, I'll lean on you for this one, that each game is its own sport, just like uh, soccer versus football versus baseball. Each game can be perceived as such as well. So you'd be targeting a different audience. And um, would you say that the spectate or the shout casting that's going on for the matches could help build that narrative for people to really connect with what they're watching? Uh, yes, for sure. You know, that's where the, the shout casters, they do just like any other I say analysts do. They interview the players before the match. They ask them questions about, you know, how they got ready for the game, what they're trying to do to win the game, um, what they did last week differently to help them, you know, come out of the win or loss, and then do that around across the board to all the players, all the people coming in, the coaches and the organizations. And then when they relay that, once the, 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 I say the match starts up, then they're talking amongst each other, you know, side by side. And then also relaying that message about X player. He's from Connecticut. He he grew up playing this for his entire life. Now he's a pro, and in the Rocket League circuit. And now he's doing this. You know, so it's that. That's where you you bring that connection in as a professional shoutcaster, as a professional broadcast analyst. You you make sure you understand. You you get to the people watching um, to understand that the, that they, these players are just you know I say normal people, but have extraordinary uh, talents with a joystick or a keyboard or mouse in their hand. And now this is also an athlete that you can, you know, root for in a way, basically. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's it's so funny. You talk about all the different uh, aspects of it. What I'm hearing most before we move on to my, the last topic I really want to talk to you guys about, I think it's really important to drive this home. It sounds to me like if education institutions are going to make, join the esports movement, and they want it to be successful, that they need to not just consider the games that the players are, the recruiting players are going to be engaging in, but also how are they going to build the narrative and offer opportunities for this larger student body to spectate and cheer on and watch their team. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, for, for a sport to grow, right, you, you can't just rely on the diehard fans, right? The Super Bowl brings in, hundred trillion dollars every year, not just from diehard fans, but from casual fans. And when a sport gets big enough from the people who aren't interested, but it's so big, they're going to watch anyways. Right. Um, what a lot of campuses are doing, which is smart. Uh, UC Irvine seen as the pioneer of your sports for some, uh, Ohio state just finished up a new esports arena. And I just read another one. I'm going to say Villanova that could be incorrect, but it's a big East school for sure. Um, they have their esports facilities where they host their their tournaments at for the teams but hey we practice at 2 p.m our games are at 5 p.m from 11 a.m to 1 30 it's wide open you you come in maybe it's free depending on your campus maybe you buy a five dollar an hour card and and you just go for it so um credit to a lot of the campuses who are uh understanding that early on that hey if if Ohio State had nobody in the horseshoe, they wouldn't make money, right? No matter how good their team is, if there's not 100,000 fans there, they're not making money. Um, so credit to a lot of these colleges who are understanding we have to have a campus excited about esports if this is going to be a viable thing for us. Um, 
So I'm very impressed uh, that they are ahead of the curve as far as that goes. I want to add on to what Brock just said. So, yeah, that's the same thing I'm doing here on campus. I just got to go through administrators and make sure I get everything cleared to have a, basically a register to for kids to come swipe their cars to come on Saturdays and Sundays where they could game on Saturday from 12 to 5, you know, just open gaming, just like open gym for us growing up. We knew what open gym meant. That means we could go to the local high school and play basketball until whatever time they said get out of there, basically. Um, so it's the same idea, doing open gaming on a Saturday and then Sunday, 11 to 4 p.m. And again, like, like Brock said, I mean, we uh, could do, like I say right now, we're doing two and a half hours for five bucks and for the whole five hours, 10 bucks. So That's it's so just cool. something, yeah, like you said, getting the student body involved. There's a lot of kids that on campus that, that play something. Um, if it's Madden, if it's 2K, if it's Fortnite, I said those are probably the popular games for that demographic. And when they see me walking around on campus, they, they ask me, can I come over there? I'm like, yeah, come on by. So until I said, I do, uh, I say I got a step two, the hoops and arrows that I got to do to make sure everything is, uh, I say, legit, then we'll definitely have a big advertisement through social media through our school website to have um, kids and faculty to come in and hang out on the weekends. Yeah, that's it's So it's the inclusivity amongst a diverse group of people is just amazing what it can do. But you are also speaking of spectating. You're also building out in the esports arena, a shout casting area, aren't you? Yes, actually, I got an email today from the group that's going to bring in uh, kind of like our demo stage and setup. So it's going to be a, a shout casting booth. And being 2020 and COVID, it's going to be COVID uh, regulation. <laughs> it's going to have the, the shout casting uh, two, uh, two shot. Yeah, it's going to be fun still. And it's going to have a monitor set up, our school colors and everything. So I'm excited. And the email said that they'll probably be here next uh, Thursday to fri or Friday to install it. So very Man, excited about it. You were holding out on me this whole time. We we're talking about spectating this whole time. And here you are holding out on me. Okay. Nah, wasn't holding out. I got so much going through this brain right now because all the emails and you, you, we were talking off uh, before we went live about Discord and all the alerts that you hear popping yeah. in. All the, that's yeah, why I, I can't remember everything. And I hear those Discord uh, notifications coming through. So that, that's, I know what's going on. <laughs> yes. You guys are in the Level Up Virtual Arcade tonight by Extreme uh. Cowboy. And we have some amazing sponsors a part of this event, including ESTB and uh, Collegiate Sports Management Group, ECAC, Rocket Reel. I mean, everybody's really come together to showcase what we can do for the students when esports goes beyond the matches. So tonight's a prime example. You guys are getting pinged out the wazoo there because those players are ready. The qualifier winners from last night are ready to play with you guys. And uh, let's see, I got my notes here. You ready for the drum roll? <laughs> so you can know who you're playing with tonight. Yeah, I don't, I need glasses. So let's see, Rocket League, you guys are going to be playing with first place winners. Those students are so excited to get the chance to play with you, Amon, and you, Brock and Shane, will be shout casting the matches. Talk about all the ancillary roles in esports beyond just the gaming. Here's our prime example. We're yeah. gonna shout cast this tonight. Yeah, I like that. It, too. it should be fun. Yeah, Shane, what do you think about what do you think the students will enjoy most about getting this opportunity? Um, I, I think they're just going to be I know if I was a student, I would just be happy to have the opportunity just to play uh, in front of a bigger audience than my buddies in, our, in my, on my sitting on my couch. You know, uh, just the opportunity to compete against somebody else that I've probably never played against um, formidable opponents. You know, you've always. Uh, I always used to get excited playing against a good team, playing against good opponents, because it's going to raise my level of play. Um, it's going to teach me things that I probably haven't learned about myself before. And I think it's just going to raise the caliber um, and expectations for everybody that's involved. Yeah, the competition pool, I think, is what they're itching for. Brock, what are you what are you uh, expecting to see uh, tonight? I'm kind of torn because, of course, I want to support – who, I mean, Amon, who has basically become another brother through this whole ESTV venture, and I want to support him, but Northwestern's a Big Ten school, and I went to Minnesota, so I, I, I got a couple hours before we love it. Love it. start up. I, I, I would love to support you, Amon, but I hope you understand where I'm coming from. I can't commit just yet. He knows where, you know where his loyalties are now. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Plot twist, one caster will be casting again. There we go. The celebration. Uh, there we go. <laughs> right. 
All right, Amon, what, what do you say about that? Are you going to be like, are you going to be mentally jaded now that you know that your own caster is going to be? <laughs> no, I'm, I say as professional athletes, we, we totally get it. So none of that phases us. It's like, okay, whatever. We get, keep it moving. I'm going to just keep it moving. You know, so I'm going to just have fun like I usually do when I play video games and let the guys know, hey, just let me know where you want me not to be so I don't be in their way. So that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta steal that. I like that. Uh, Amon, I'm trying to make this great. You're 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 killing me here. <laughs> yeah, no way not to be. Dumb, what's up? Uh, Ragged League is not my main game. I'll I'll be honest. That is not my game. But it's a game do I, I do help coach in terms of uh, the kids understanding strategy and uh, to understanding basically when because we had a moment during training camp uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago that. The players that had been playing for all training camp then finally scrimmaged against another university. And that university scored multiple goals on them in like real quick fashion. And the players, I just saw, I looked over at their computers and their gaming station and they kind of had this deer in headlights look like, oh my God, what just happened? I'm like, hey, that's Rocket League, right? They're going to, you're going to get scored on. Now you got to figure out how you get past that score and score your own goals. And they're like, yeah, I'm like, they like shook out of it. And then they're like, okay, let's go, let's play. And then they, yeah. when they finally turned it around, but uh, it was a learning moment for, uh, for, for them, for me to teach them, you know, how basically when you make a mistake or you get beat on a play, how you forget that play and move to the next one to try to win the next play to try to, to try to win the match. And it happens all the time in real life. We get hit with something we don't expect all the time. Mm -hmm. And sports is a great way to teach young minds how to face adversity in a safe setting, so to speak. Yes, like, yeah. You're going to fail, and you got to learn how to deal with that, too. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And use All it right. again, use it for yourself in a positive way, basically. Absolutely. So one more question for you guys. Uh, we, were, we were making the parallels. You just talked about some heated competitions happening. You know, during the headlights, headlights look, uh, look whenever you – get hit with a curveball from your competitor or your opposing team. How do they wind down after the matches? I mean, I know in football, you're going to be icing down your putting on heat pads or ice pads. Yeah. I played soccer. I had to go get in ice baths with my ankles all the time. Two mm. thirds, not a, not a good experience. How do, how do gamers uh, wind down after the game? Uh, the, have a, for, for the one, for my players that I've watched and I've observed, we, you know, school just started for campus we're pretty much open almost 100 percent, and we have classes um, in person and virtually so right now they go do homework <laughs> basically uh but i say on the weekends the older ones i say the ones above 21 you know they they have invited me out just to hang out for a little bit just kind of unwind no different than on a friday or saturday night after or sunday night after a game where you get with a couple of your teammates you just kind of just go somewhere and kick your feet up and talk about the game or don't talk about the game. So you kind of, you know, deep, I say decompress from that game, win or lose um, so far. So that's what I've seen and heard from uh, the players on my roster. Well, what about, uh, you know, throbbing hands? I've, I've actually heard that esports injuries are a thing. Yes, you know? there, there is a thing. So, so yeah, in terms of that aspect, uh, I actually been showing the, the players in here, uh, a doctor that I met through stream, through my Twitch channel and through his Twitch channel. He actually streams, cannot remember his name right now but he it is uh his website is esports health and he shows different ways to stretch your arms and your elbows and your fingers um before and after um a competition or practice and so i've been taking the kids through that i've been putting we have a big screen here in the studio um, where we play and practice and i put it on the big screen right at the beginning of the practice and i'm and i'm and i do it at the end so they can see the stretches going on little videos that play that I could restart and put them on a loop. And so they're doing everything that a chiropractor would do and, you know, popping the joints, popping the knuckles in your hands, stretching the elbows out, stretching the hands out. Because, you know, for them, majority of my roster either played sports back in high school or, or grade school, but haven't in, while, in a while. And then a few of them are current student athletes where they play baseball, uh, basketball, football, and uh, I know soccer, but so we have a few soccer players on the team right now. So they understand that. You know, it's now, but it's me getting the, the, the athlete that hadn't played traditional sports, understanding this is why you stretch, understand why, and don't think it as me making you do something, you know, like it's a punishment. So you, you guys all got some prizes coming for the players tonight, and you got some for yourself, speaking of recovery. 
Hyper Ice. So they were gracious enough to provide a lot of awesome prizes for the raffle and for the Arcade Cup that you guys are participating in tonight on the Esports U Network Twitch channel. So don't miss it. Make sure you watch it. Obviously, Amon's bringing his A game. And these guys are going to cast outside of his favor for the opposing team. So <laughs> it's, it's a plot twist. Bro, can you use Hyper Ice before and Absolutely. after the game? Let's Absolutely. And uh, to your and Amon's and Shane's point, um, yes, you know, may maybe uh, there's not a fear of concussions or a torn ACL, but there are significant long term effects that come from sitting, um, that come from rapid wrist and finger movement and um, preparation. Wait, what's, what's, what's the phrase I'm trying to say? Uh, Prehab, so you don't have to do rehab. I think is how the, uh, the yes, the, uh, I heard that so many times. There you go. There you in go. the training so, room. Absolutely. That was the first for me. I I was my yes. Prehab, so you don't have to do rehab. So take care of those joints. You are sitting down. Your hips are tight. Your back is tight. Your neck is sore because you're whether you've tried to or not, you're slightly leaned forward. Find a buddy if if you have that tough to reach spot with your hyper ice, and they can get it for you. But m massaging that lower backside chain as well as from your, your uh, shoulders up. Um, because I promise you there's nothing worse. I'm a big time golfer. Well, I say that like I'm good. I golf a lot. <laughs> um, and there is nothing worse than going out, golfing 18, coming home, playing Call of Duty for five hours, waking up in the morning, and all of a sudden I can't walk and I can't turn my head. Um, thankfully, Hyper Ice is ahead of the curve when it comes to eSports physical management, we'll, we'll call it. And they're getting in there early, and a lot of esports players um, are going to be thankful for that. I couldn't agree with you more. And on that note, my dear friends, thank you for joining me. I got to go you. stretch and put some hyper ice on because I've been <laughs> in this chair for way too long. I can't wait to see you guys uh, perform and show up tonight for the students and show us how it's done when it comes to gaming and casting. Hopefully, we can all take a page out of this and replicate this with all the schools that are joining the esports movement. That's all we have for Esports Center today, everyone. Make sure you catch the Level Up Arcade tonight with Amon, Shane, and Brock.